how does an idea start? How does it go from fuzzy fragments to composition, harmony, and color? While there is no one proven formula, most people agree that it starts with a spark of inspiration. Hello, my name is Nina Cruz. I am the creator of Grace and the Atlas Moth. The inspiration for this piece started what seems like eons ago, uh, back in my childhood. As a kid growing up, I wasn't allowed to go to the cinema, so I didn't have that experience till much later. In college, I started to really go to the movie theater uh, quite a bit as a way of resting in between my studies. I remember sitting there being blown away with the narrative power of cinematography. Somehow, the big screen opened me up to what visual storytelling could do. I think we have all had this experience. We take in a film and we feel ourselves completely changed by it, be it fiction or nonfiction, it doesn't matter, but we're changed. And so much so that we don't even wanna leave the movie theater when the lights come back on because it means going back to everyday life. It means that in a week's time, the magic is gone. And that palpable thing that's in the theater when we took in that visual, that story, that we could overcome anything or accomplish something great is gone with the distractions of everyday life. I remember even back then thinking to myself, no matter what shape uh, my creativity takes, I this is what I want to do. I want to touch the human conscious. Uh, I'm not a cinematographer, but I am a visual person. I can communicate visually. I wanted this to sort of be larger than life. And I had this vision years ago when I discovered uh, the amazing wingspan of the Atlas Moth and how big it was compared to a, a hand. Since that time, uh, there was a shift in my work and I started working with wood stain as a painting medium, not in the traditional sense. I developed my own techniques on using it like with my actual brushes, not with rags, not with Q-tips, but actual as a painting medium. Everything on my website is with oil-based stains to date, and this was the first time that I was doing an actual piece in water-based. I did that because of the very high VOC levels on oil-based stains. I'd be working for a very long period of time on this piece, and I'd be working indoors. So it forced me to switch to water-based, but that also meant creating brand new techniques because it's really, really different in how it operates than oil-based but I'm really happy the way that it came out. There's very little room for error, so I did have to work slowly and actually stay in the present moment and not keep looking to how I wanted it to be done, wanted it to be done. I really had to enjoy, sit and enjoy the process, which I found satisfying because that's what the piece is to actually be in the present mo moment and enjoy what's happening right before you. Grace and the Atlas Moth is a slice in space-time where the hidden is seen and things become possible. It captures an ephemeral moment. We're not seeing what we think we see. Once out of its cocoon, an Atlas Moth only lives about a week. The time to live out its destiny is fleeting, but in that time, it gives the world the uniqueness of its grand size. The Atticus Atlas is one of the largest in the world. Its wingspan can reach almost 12 inches wide. That makes this hand impossibly large in our world. This scene represents the mysterious moments of grace in life that escape our notice because the human mind lives in the past or the future. The moth is a symbol of our human life, a metaphor of a fleeting existence. Like the atlas, our time is short but we have the choice to spread our wings and give the world what we came to give. We can all experience profound and mysterious moments of grace if we stay and live in the present moment. This piece offers the opportunity to contemplate the ephemeral beauty surrounding the circumstances of the Atlas's existence. For just a moment, be the moth. Note how your own life has been touched in extraordinary moments of hidden grace.